On behalf of engine historian, author, and restorer Graham White, my name is Tom Fay, and today's video will describe the restoration and running of the ultra rare high performance or hyper Continental IV 1430 aircraft engine of the early 1940s. The engines listed here were all part of an American program instituted in the early 1930s to generate the ideas, technology, and hardware to jumpstart the power and efficiency of American piston aircraft engines for use in the bombers and transport aircraft of the future. This fascinating and convoluted program is beyond the scope of this present video and it proved to be a complicated and frustrating endeavor. Graham has a chapter dedicated to the experimental high performance engines in his book, Allied Piston Aircraft Engines of World War II. These are the specifics of Continental's hyper engine, the IV-1430, initially known as the XI-1430. The engine displaced 1,430 cubic inches and eventually made up to 2,100 horsepower. It was an inverted V12 design with two-stage supercharging, intercooling, and anti-detonation injection. The engine weighed 1,650 pounds and was first run in 1939. 23 engines were manufactured. Six survive as of 2025, but only one of these engines runs. The IV-1430 had a long and complicated gestation period that is well described by William Pierce and extensively documented on the Aircraft Engine Historical Society website. The elongated shape of the engine was fully intentional as it was designed to be buried inside the aircraft wings for greater aerodynamic efficiency. The rather unique propeller reduction gearbox can be seen in the nose at the left and the single speed gear driven second stage supercharger can be seen at the rear on the right. Looking at the front of the engine towards the left, the first stage of propeller reduction was by spur gears with a secondary reduction via bevel gears. The propeller shaft turned opposite the direction of the crankshaft. The inverted design required oil scavenging pumps in the valve covers. The Continental IV-1430 Hyper engine first flew in November of 1942 in the one-off Lockheed XP-49. The second aircraft to fly with the IV-1430 was the McDonnell XP-67 in January of 1944. Both aircraft had troubled developmental lives with a plethora of mechanical, system, and aerodynamic issues, which included fuel leaks and engine fires. Period video of the XP-67 in flight can be found at the link on the reference page. So it is at this point in your average YouTube video that watchers depart. So I offer this live IV-1430 audio clip to help you stick around just a little bit longer. some detail shots of the IV-1430 during the restoration process. The well-pickled and perhaps zero-time condition of the engine when acquired from the New England Air Museum in the early 2000s and the unavailability of parts, gaskets, seals, and specialized tools meant that while the accessories were refurbished, the power section of the engine was left mostly undisturbed. You'll notice the straight exhaust pipes. The IV-1430 used collector type exhaust manifolds to feed exhaust gases to the turbocharger 
when installed in an aircraft. This produced a somewhat muted exhaust tone. This difference is akin to the differing sounds between the Allison V1710 installed in the turbocharged P38 versus the open stack version of the same engine in the P40. So these straight pipes reveal an engine sound likely not heard since test stand runs in the 1940s. The Stromberg PD-12 injection carburetor was compatible with water injection systems and was built by Bendix in the United States. The single duplex Bosch Magneto, shown here mounted above the nose of the engine, managed the ignition duties for all of the 24 spark plugs. The webbed round casing at the rear of the engine houses the mechanically driven second stage supercharger, which spins at 19,500 RPM at war emergency power. The black carburetor feeds the air fuel mixture into the eye of the supercharger. During its modern running life, one cylinder dropped a valve seat which bent a valve. Fortunately, this could be repaired and the exposed piston is shown on the left. The intake manifold is shown on the right. There were a myriad of economic, practical, safety, and engineering decisions required to design and build a running stand for a 1500 horsepower engine. Nothing was simple. Perseverance and problem solving were essential restoration skills. Coolant and oil radiators for the 1430 were adapted for use from oil coolers normally used on the Pratt & Whitney R2800 and R1830 radial engines, respectively. The Continental IV 1430 was built in two versions, one with a propeller that spun clockwise and a second version where the propeller spun counterclockwise. The propeller shaft on Graham's IV 1430-11 engine spins opposite that of most common American engines, thus opposite rotating left-handed propellers are scarce. A typical right-handed DC-3 propeller was modified to run opposite its normal direction and the blades locked in place to provide a modicum of airflow through the radiators and over the engine. Graham said cooling was never an issue with the IV-1430 on his running stand. And this is what the Hyper engine looks like ready to run.
this solitary running Continental IV1430 has moved on from Graham White's care to another appreciative owner. Additional information on the subject can be found in references listed here. On behalf of Graham White and the Aircraft Engine Historical Society, we thank you for watching and encourage you to visit www.enginehistory.org as well as view the other AEHS videos on this channel. Thank you.